Hello, the Florentine viewers. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Helen Farrell, Editor-in-Chief, and um, we're in a slightly happier place in Italy. I say slightly because we're certainly not out of the woods yet, but uh, as the Italian government has announced, uh, we will be easing pandemic measures from Monday, and Tuscany is almost certainly returning to yellow zone measures. So we'll be able to eat in restaurants outdoors at lunch and dinner, uh, and our cultural spaces, museums and exhibitions will be reopening very soon. In fact, we've just heard from Uffizi that they're planning on opening as early as next week. So we're in a slightly happier place and in a celebration of uh, celebration, a mark, a gesture of, uh, of love for our culture. Um, please do join us uh, and purchase uh, the upcoming the art issue of the Florentine, which will be available from next Thursday. And here you have a sneak peek of the cover. Uh, it's the uh, a photograph of the uh, David's twin, the reproduction that is uh, going to the expo in Dubai. So without any further ado, thank you for joining us this evening. Our special guest is Kathy McCabe of Dream of Italy, uh, an Italian travel expert. Uh, who who has travelled the length and breadth of the country, and um, we're just waiting for Kathy to join us on screen. Here she is. Thank you, Kathy. It's a pleasure and a privilege to have you with us this evening. I'm thrilled. <clears throat> I'm thrilled to be here. Can you hear me? Okay. We can't hear you, unfortunately, Kathy. I don't you know why. Can't hear Hopefully, me. we'll get you back in a minute. <laughs> you can't hear me. All right, Jane says that like, we can, but I can't hear you, which is an odd situation. Oh, um, let's Let see. Just Hold check on. In case it's me. I could just do it straight through the um, computer if we need to. I do love these live presentations. I'm talking. Can you hear me? Um, stereo audio. So strange because you could hear me. Can you hear me so now? This is very strange because I can't hear Kathy, but I'm told that you can hear her, which is going to bode very, <laughs> it's going to be very interesting for our conversation. Wait, hold on. Jane, maybe could you just come back on screen a second and uh, we can yeah, see I'm here. We, how we'll to sort the audio the issues. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, Kathy. It seems like we've, there must be some lack of connection on Helen's behalf, and we very had well. to only two minutes ago. So on the unfortunate events of live performances uh, yeah, with us. It is. Um, so they. So I'm just telling my camera guy, Chuck. One of them can hear me. She can hear me. She oh, can't. Okay. She's the host. But it may be on their end. It's on your end, I think. Maybe our guests can let goes. us know if our guests can hear uh, Kathy as well. Maybe you can help us balance out the odds to see where we need to fix yes. the connection. They can um, can uh, put something in the private chat. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we can begin our chat anyway, Kathy, uh, not to lose time on resolving audio issues. And maybe we could start with how Dreaming of Italy came about and when did the concept for Dream of Italy Travel Mag begin? Um, so I actually founded it in 2002. So that's 19 years ago. And it started as a subscription newsletter, um, a membership website. And then we recently, I brought some with me today. We read it, we've redesigned as a glossy magazine. Um, oh, look, here's our favorite city. <laughs> wow. mm -hmm. So, um, and you know how difficult and challenging and interesting it is to publish. A uh, regular, regularly. So I have been at the helm of I think 180 issues. Oh wow! So it's incredible, and it's um, you know we were writing about villa rentals and cooking lessons and truffle hunting and this experiential travel right when it was really taking off. Right. Um, and so that's what we've been doing all these years, and it uh, turned into a TV show in 2015 on the PBS network here in the United States a podcast, travel service, sort of everything you need to keep your dreams going for Italy and to help you when it's time to travel again. Exactly. And on that note, you kindly provided us with a video clip, uh, a promo, a little sneak peek of uh, that TV series. So maybe I can bring that up for us now just to uh, introduce our conversation. So this is, yeah. Hmm. So this is to set the stage that so we have a new TV special coming out in June called Dream of Italy Travel, Transform, and Thrive. I won't tell you who's in it. You can watch. 
but it's all about, I think what that next step is for everyone or that Italy is not just a trip, it's really a transformation. Absolutely. And with that, I will bring this onto our screen. <laughs> I'm Kathy McCabe. In our new Dream of Italy special, I help you travel, transform, and thrive. Learn from celebrities and expats how to live happier and healthier the Italian way. Well, I'm living in this Dream of Italy. You know, if you, if you pan the camera around, you'll see, you'll see a, a, a vista that is, is dreamlike. That is so enticing. I, I can't wait for you to tell us a little bit more about what we can expect in that series. So it's really about how it, you can live better through Italy. So what happens to so many people is they take that trip and they're like, wow, I should drink espresso in the morning or I should take a, an afternoon pausa. I should take a break in the afternoon. They start to incorporate parts of their life, uh, parts of the Italian lifestyle into their own lives. And they see how Italians are happier and healthier. And one of the most interesting things in getting ready or preparing to do this special was finding out that Italy topped the Bloomberg Global Health Index wow. many times. Now I think this year it's Spain, but it's usually Spain or Italy. And it's um, about access to organic food, community, um, health care. So Italians are living happier and healthier and the question is why and we explore that and then we tell the stories of these six expats or part-time expats some are famous like sting and his wife trudy who have a wonderful estate near florence um and some are not so famous but will be because i'm telling you the breakout star is my friend sally carasino who retired to florence oh she's a pistol um and her dog zoe zoe um unfortunately, who passed away. She's in the special. Um, and then we also have, there's a lot of Florence connections. There's, there's a disproportionate amount of Florence <laughs> in this special. Um, uh, David and Alicia Bach, who brought their family on a radical sabbatical to Florence. Um, they're in the show. Um, Michaela Capecchi, who I know writes for you, the attorney who we talked to about visas and citizenship. And then we do a really cute scene where we have a Sunday lunch with my friends, um, Aaron Pierzini and Alberto Pierzini, who are half American, half Italian family. So if you love Florence, there is a lot to see in the special. And undoubtedly many of our viewers are going to be eagerly anticipating uh, all of those episodes and some very well-known names locally here as well, of course. Uh, some of those will be familiar to people tuning in. So I'm sure they're looking forward to uh, learning more and delving into perhaps different aspects of life here and um, so it's certainly bound to be interesting um, I, I have think a question, so. I have a question here on Helen's behalf of course which unfortunately <laughs> doesn't matter. Helen to I miss that. you it was so I know. short <laughs> well, in the behind the scenes here but in the meantime thankfully she has everything provided right here um, Especially our American friends are dreaming of coming to Italy right now when we're still unsure of when that will be possible. Um, but what are your thoughts on the possibility of vacations to Italy this summer? Well, I don't know any, we were just talking about this one before we came on live. I don't know anything more than other people. And I think Helen and I were really thinking it might be late summer or September when Americans could go back. You know, there's all these announcements like, Italy is opening to tourism in May, June, and it, it seems like it would be to um, the EU first, or there would be sort of a step-by-step um, -step process. But I know many people are eagerly anticipating a return and looking. I mean, I know uh, 2022 is really booking up <laughs> for yes. those who, who, who have maybe a more complicated trip and they, they're not sure, you know, they can't sort of do it fly by night if they're doing a multi-generational trip or something. They're booking for 2022, but I know many people are trying to go back um, September, October in there. Okay. And of course, it's also hypothetical, really, for everyone. I know. Day-by-day day basis. Um, yes. Um, but slowly but surely, I feel we can start to, as Helen said, we, we have that slightly more positive signs of a new reopening plan at the very least. And I'm glad to hear that. Fingers and toes crossed that everything will go according to plan. Um, so another topic then of interest uh, for our, our viewers undoubtedly is how you visited the length and breadth of Italy and had 
incredible experiences on both a professional and personal level. And have you anything that you're particularly looking forward to seeing on your next return to Italy? Well, I've done it over 26 years. So it wasn't like, you know, I went up and down so many trips uh, personally um, to my mother's ancestral hometown, which really started my whole obsession. Um, um, and professionally, um, so many, we did a great Florence episode, Venice, Bologna, Abruzzo. Mm -hmm. I really fell in love with Abruzzo. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it's not that like one place that I need to go back to. It's the, just the smells yes. and the taste and the air and the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that coffee. first espresso sure. when you get off the plane. Nothing, um, like it. nothing like it. I can't even, I mean, I can imagine, but then I can't even imagine. Um, and I'd really like to go. I mean, I just, um, Trieste is something that has been on my list for years. I um, There's a wonderful Jan, Jan Morris, who's like, who was the queen of travel writing book about Trieste. I can't believe I've never made it there. I'd like to get there i'd like to go back to sicily i mean but i'll go anywhere <laughs> that's the beauty of italy really isn't it? you can't go wrong wherever you yeah. are you're bound to find beauty um which makes it just a, an endlessly fascinating place to to visit and undoubtedly to work a, 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 have italy as the focus of your work must be incredibly um rewarding too that you're embracing culture and cuisine and meeting so many interesting characters uh it must give you a lot oh, of joy <laughs> well i've done it for 19 years and i'm not tired of it yet and that says a lot you know that says a lot um also about how endless italy is absolutely endless in possibilities and even just one city like florence you could never completely um dig through it uh as you know with your work uh with the florentine it it it, it is such a rich layered place um and um i can't wait to get back and that's it and i think another one of the greatest joys of florence particularly is the fact that there's a museum and gallery it almost feels like on every street and it just you might just see a doorway and maybe a small plaque and then you enter and you're immersed in an incredible environment and atmosphere with centuries of artistic and cultural heritage so it really is um as you said it's endless there's just so much to explore and um, then you have your podcast just so maybe you could tell us a little bit about that as well um so i started the podcast last year um, it's hard to keep up with everything, <laughs> I gotta tell you. The content machine. Um, so I've been working so much on the on the TV special this last year. Um, but we've just restarted. More episodes are coming. We just did a wonderful one on um, Seeds from Italy, which is a great company, um, to make your own Italian garden here in the US or wherever you live. And um, you probably know how essential the garden is to Italian yeah. culture. So it's it's a it's a chance to go a little broader the 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 one uh frustration with television is how short how brief it is but to take the topics and go further we have two podcasts coming out on citizenship and claiming or reclaiming uh, claiming actually citizenship um if you have ancestral roots and so more than 16 million americans have italian blood so um and i know um the demand for citizenship and passports and other options is uh, really booming. And so we have those two coming out next week, which will help people learn how to do how to, it's a great option if you want to live there, right? It makes it a lot easier. That's it. And have you any guests you can reveal to us on the podcast? Or does it tend to take um, any theme for each episode? Or how is there a structure to the, the podcast series? No, it's usually one. Um, these are two companies, um, ItalyAncestry.com and My Italian Family. There's oh. usually one um, guest per episode. Francis May is the author of Under the Tuscan Sun, has been on twice. Oh, great. Um, and it's just a wonderful opportunity to like let things breathe and and even what you can't and you understand like with the quarantine you know you have a word count right you can't yes. you can only get so much in and so um so people can check that out dreamofitaly.com you can click on podcast um but the tv show you can watch all of the back is the back issues the back episodes 
Um, and they're all still airing on PBS and on Amazon Prime. It's great to have the audio alternative too, I think. We've all probably uh, yes. over in screen time and it's great to get have the choice, either listen to some content or uh, just to give our eyes a break too and just be hearing about uh, Italy is as interesting as looking at visuals of it. So I think it's great that you've offered a variety of resources to learn about Italy and to get to know these. Also that, that very important information, particularly about citizenship, it's something a lot of people ask about and can be quite overwhelming to kind of pick, pinpoint yeah. the details. So it's great to have that made clear and accessible um, for people who are looking to, to get it. Yes, yes. It offers a lot of options. And I'm going through myself. I have sort of a more convoluted story uh, or, or a path um, because of the 1948 rule, which is actually in this special. We kind of go back to my story and see where my new dream, you know, is 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 coming true. And Michaela helps me with the citizenship um, information. But it's it's um, it's a really hot trend, as you know. And it's wonderful because people can pass it on to their children. Their children can go to university. Um, it just gives you so much more options. And I think, you know, I'm curious, even what you guys are seeing. I love talking to other journalists and other people who are publishing, um, like what trends you're seeing. And people are, I think people are looking for what's next. So what are our lives going to be like now? Yes. And, um, and not it's it's not you know we can't put our dreams off because we just don't know what that's, life will be like. That's true. I actually read um, about the word languishing and how many of us may feel like that's the state we've been in for so many months. And yes. and the feeling of can my dream be realized? When can it be realized? And feeling that there's um it's been hard to feel like it's been anything's been on pause. But I think dreaming is the only way to have been able to keep having a direction through all of you know these very difficult months and you know that still hasn't we're not out of it yet you know but it is great to have this drive towards something positive and to think about and to create the next um you know more optimistic step um so it's wonderful to have that at the center of your you know your series and your podcast and to the practical steps to realize those dreams as well um, I think it's a powerful word, and one of the best things I ever did was come up with this name, yes. you know, 20 years, 19 or 20 years ago, um, and it, it never had so much resonance as the last year and a half. I get, I mean, yes. each day I get several emails from viewers, you know, viewers, readers, uh, you know, about the show, about their own dreams, and... Um, I didn't realize what the show, what the brand, what the content meant to people. I thought, well, it's Italy. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, but it's about much more than Italy. It's about giving people sort of a permission to have a dream, to fulfill a dream, to go for a dream, whether it's big or it's small. Um, and <clears throat> I think people need that more than ever, that the permission that if you aren't happy with something in your life, you can change it. That's it. And we've never had so much time to evaluate where we are in our lives and what we're doing in our lives. And as we've been, you know, enclosed in four walls and we have really been looking around at every detail. <laughs> I've moved items around on shelves more times than I can count even just to try and put a focus on things. So I think on a bigger scale and uh, figuring out what's next for people, for yourself and for um, families or whatever else you're trying to think about it's um it's great to have something solid to hold on to and realize that all of that as you said um and then perhaps we didn't give enough focus to your travel mag and <laughs> it's okay. there's there's so much. as well there's so much to cover here but that's one thing we didn't really get to grips with did we well you know i brought some uh, brought some issues so it um i publish it now six times a year i was oh. doing 10 um, and I was doing 10 for many, many years, but I just thought with the new format, you know, it gives you a couple of weeks breathing room to get more content together. And we cover every, um, oh, I don't have this issue, the issue with me, but we just did one called Making Their Dream of Italy Come True. And it was about people who made their dream come true, very similar to the content of the TV special. Um, but it was people who started, you know, went to Italy, got inspired, 
started a business at home, uh, a man, John Henderson, who retired on his own in Rome, yeah. um, another woman who runs trips to Tuscany. So we're diversifying the content. The content was, it has always been where to eat, who to meet, what to do, what to see everywhere, uh, all over Italy. And, and that remains, but we're doing sort of more um, profiles of people who've made their dream come true, recipes, things we can enjoy um, even when we're not going. Yes, that's it. And that is one thing I think a lot of people have been seeking recipes. That's what we've noticed. There's never been such a <laughs> hunger for Italian cuisine uh, because it's something that people could recreate in their kitchens wherever they were. And as you said, we, we discussed coffee. At least you can, you know, buy an Italian coffee and make it your own your, at home, even if it's not quite the same experience as as entering a cafe in Italy. And it brings you as close as possible when you're not able to visit, I suppose. Well, everyone uh, needs their, their mocha pot. I did a little, um, uh, it's even in the show where I go through the typical Italian day and sort of the rhythm of the day. And we, uh, we started a little scene with Sally and her mocha pot. And, um, it's incredible. I, I am sure the statistic is more than this, but I read that 90% of Italians own at least one. I'm sure it's like 99. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, um, again, I'm going with Helen's questions. As you know, we'd hope to have Helen here. But she had an, an interesting question here saying that you were ahead of the zeitgeist when you launched a subscription newsletter and reader support model uh, all those years ago. So. What do you view as the future of a community-based brand like Dream of Italy? I thought that was such a good question. I was looking at this. She sent me the questions. I was looking at it last night. I'm like, oh, Helen, that's such good a good one. question. I actually do. You never know until you look back. I, I was ahead of my time. I had a membership website 19 years ago um, and uh, or started one 19 years ago. And um, I think even this special that we're doing where Italy is much more than a trip, it's a, 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 trans, a chance, I can't speak, to thrive, to transform. Um, when I came up with the concept in uh, 2019, of course, no one knew there would be a pandemic. So that hit, um, I think it is hitting when it comes out right at the right time. We were talking about um, events and I was really getting into doing live events as I know you were before the pandemic. And I think that there will still be um, a need for those, a hunger for those. Um, maybe doing a little more with, I used to bring people to Italy. I just got really busy, but bringing people or hosting people in Italy, I think would be interesting, like taking them through the whole, um, experience, but I'm not totally sure. Um, it's so funny, you know, sometimes people have paused in this pandemic. I actually have a personal, I have, um, a very personal story related to Italy that I'm working on a, a book. Um, so it's, that's much more. Um, sort of my own focus. It's my whole crazy, I have the craziest story of how I rediscovered my ancestral hometown and then everything that came with that. Nice. Um, there's a lot of mystical <laughs> aspects to it. And um, so I know that that's something I'm, I'm going to focus on personally, but for Dream of Italy, we will see. It's, um, you know, it hopefully will take people, it's taken them through the pandemic. We did something fun. We did like a crowdsourced issue and a crowdsourced podcast. And I love that because lots of people write or want to write or have my, I always say my readers, my viewers, they know more than I do in a lot of ways about, you know, places in Italy. And so to bring them in to be part and creating the content it's something I'd wanted to do for like 10 years. I just hadn't gotten around to it. So maybe something um, more like that. Um, so there's, there's a lot of new, you know, virtual reality. There's a lot of new things um, all the time. But I think I'm still pretty traditional, <laughs> you know, with the print. You know, it's still print, like the Florentine. Yes, it still absolutely. gets mailed to people that you can't quite replicate that. No, I, I'm a big, I'm a firm believer in the, the, the value of having something paper in your hands too. I think there's nothing quite like it. However, having said that, we found that having this, this window into, you know, into our community and speaking with our community through these digital channels was 
a really interesting thing to have learned throughout this period. And I wonder, would we have really, all of us, taken such a digital uh, dive had we not been forced to? Um, I think no, it gave yeah. A, I think we've never we have been, been familiar with it all. We have been doing virtual workshops throughout the winter, and I do plan to resume some, but I, I just have been feeling like, um, and we are going to do a few, and we're doing a big premiere party, which will be digital. So any member, anyone who's part of Dream of Italy is a paid member, will come to our online premiere party. You guys are all welcome, and we'll show more of the special. Um, and we're going to have prizes from the sponsors, some really good prizes, actually. Um, and so that's another way to bring the community together. And so I think there's still a place for all of that. But but I know you must feel like this too. I just want to like run through the grass and no. go to the beach and have drinks with my friends. And um, you know, there's we're hungry for for that tactile experience too. Absolutely. And I think that there's nothing quite like it, as you said, just to have that it, the physical company or of people around you and to hear voices around you is um, something we were you know it's been said many a times around all this, but we will appreciate it more. You know, so it's something to dream about um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and another one here from Helen is how can the Florentines audience become members of Dream of Italy and as you mentioned they, that the, there'll be a members only premiere party of the new PBS special on May 27th yes. so it's, it's a good time to sign up then if you could then yes and you've actually um I always do these bonuses um so Helen will probably understand really well with subscriptions with memberships it's so always like, I have done Dream of Italy espresso cups. I've done Dream of Italy olive oil. I've done DVDs. I've done books. So right now, the two bonuses are the premier party invitation and also a wonderful um, ebook from our friend Judy Witt Trancini, who um, is in Tuscany and her uh, recipes, one of my favorite recipe books or cookbooks. Um, and so if you go to dreamofitaly.com, you can just, there's a join uh, up on the menu. And the wonderful thing about the membership is you get access to 180 back issues. So if you're planning a trip anywhere, you can look up all the content. Um, you can get the issues, but you can also, all the issues are on web pages, which um, Elaine, a woman who works for me, updated all, like, all the content. It took her a while. Um, so everything's updated. So it's a great resource. Um, and you can also get anything about the TV show, the podcast the virtual workshops. We have a coloring book. I didn't bring it with me, but that was something I did over the um, COVID was what would be sort of fun to, uh, like a fun um, way to visit Italy. So we, I hired an illustrator and we did a, a Dream of Italy coloring book. Oh, that's great. Well, can I ask what kind of images or can I, uh, I'm sure I could guess some, but what kind of images did you have in that? Um, one was like, there's a, the, a check, uh, a, like a restaurant with a checked uh, tablecloth. There's sunflowers, um, gelato, pizza, um, a road with cypress trees. Uh, you know, some of the iconic uh, yes. images, but then also just those everyday things that we love: espresso. Yes. I think we had some. We had like a collage of mocha pots and espresso beans, and um, and uh, coffee cups. I, I can you tell I actually only had this much coffee this morning. I'm in Denver, so it's morning. Can you oh, tell I keep bringing up coffee? I, I, think I need some more. <laughs> uh, whereas we're reaching the end of our working week here, so yeah. I, we're we're on the wind down as well. <laughs> whereas you're, you're yeah. just waking up there. <laughs> Um, there's lots of comments coming in here, uh, people very much looking forward to your special and thanking you for this talk as well. Um, so I will invite anyone tuning in to ask any questions as we come into the last few minutes of this talk. Yeah, oh, it's last few minutes, it was fast. <laughs> um, with Cheryl, who has said that the latest issue is beautiful, so I'm sure people are looking That was the one I don't have the cover with me, that oh. was one of my favorites. The one about people making their dream of Italy come true. So you can get it if you come to the website. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, that's Oh, how nice. Oh, Joan loves my, this looks like, um, it's not, but Angela Caputi, I think it's Angela Caputi and Rome does necklaces like oh, this. Okay. But I got mine at TJ Maxx and it's very funny. I wore it a lot in season two. I mean, it was summer and look, 
if you wear white around, this is my tip, you wear white around your neck, you look younger, you look brighter. Well, I have this guy write to me <laughs> like a month ago and he's like, Gabby, my gay brother and I are gonna buy you a new necklace. Like stop wearing the necklace. So I haven't worn that. I mean, I wore the necklace in season two. I haven't actually worn it in like two years. But today I was like, I need some, something. So I'm some gonna wear my big white necklace. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, you've, you've. I think, I hope we've covered everything you'd wanted to discuss. Unless there's anything I've left out there that you'd like to start in in, the, in these last few minutes. Well, the big thing coming up is the special travel transform and drive. And so, if your viewers um, are in the U.S., they can find it on their local PBS station early June. Um, you can come to dreamofitaly.com, and we have a search box where you can put your zip code in, and it'll tell you what channel what time and then eventually it will be on amazon prime internationally and on youtube and people can see it everywhere but there's a companion book coming out with the show um and then people have an opportunity americans if they support so it's public television if they um, donate to their local public television station they can get all kinds of gifts including an extended dvd a sunflower i have it on um, from del brenna in portona I have it on back here somewhere. <laughs> um, so I always have a little bit of Tuscany with me. I also have, a, I always wear a bell from Capri that was my mom. Um, so I always have Italy with me um, right there, but it's a great chance for people to support public television if they live in the U.S. Um, and we do a little recipe booklet. As you said, recipes were are really um, hot. And I had a really fascinating or interesting or t touching experience um, my parents have passed away and I had all their, you know, I had a lot of their belongings in a stored space and I found two of my grandmother's recipes and they're actually going to be in the recipe booklet. Um, so one special. is, uh, yeah, one is handmade ravioli and yeah, so we all have very deep, you know, whether you're Italian or not, so many of us have really deep connections to Italy. Oh, it, it grabs you and makes you stay here for sure. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> quality of life is um obviously if you know it would be remiss to ignore the difficulties here currently and um, so it would you know we have to always remind ourselves too of you know what we what we always need to help it be rebuilt to in the best way possible so i think it, it's what, what we all treasure about Florence, what we all treasure about Italy makes us dream about it and but we also need to care for it i think and so it, it's great to have, you know, the right, um, just the consciousness about, you know, where, where, what we want Italy to, to emerge from this crisis uh, as and how we need to support the soul of, the, of Italy, um, which is its, you know, its cuisine, its culture, its people and, you know, so many other things. Um, so it's, it's great to just keep, keep thinking about um, Italy when you're afar and I'm sure viewers who've tuned in are even more highly anticipating their trips which hopefully you'll be able to take soon and I'll direct our viewers once again to your website so they can get all that info on what we were discussing during the talk and with that Kathy I will say thank you so much for joining us it's been lovely thank to speak. you thank you for pinch hitting I'm uh, so sorry I was I it was lovely to speak with you I was looking forward to Helen no um, I but next time we'll do it in person. How about that? <laughs> and then we that there'll be none of these uh, issues. Oh, I have my middle name is technical problems. <laughs> so when I've done Zooms and when I've done our virtual workshops, there is always something. There really is always something. Well, thank you, Kathy. Anyway, and thank you for uh, you know sticking with me as I. <laughs> caught no, up you on. did great. Thank you. Um, Looking forward to hearing more about your projects in the future as well. Okay. So thank you, to thank you to everyone who's tuned in as well. We've appreciated you joining in and um, a presto. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao.